Let's look at overriding with inheritance. In order to do that, we're going to look at three different classes. The Character 5 class, which is going to be the Super class. The Laser Man 5 class, which is going to extend the Character 5 class. And it's going to be the subclass of Character 5. And Inheritance 105, which is going to be our runner. Or it's going to create the objects of the class in order to call the methods of the class and see what happens. In order to show overriding, what I'd like to do first is create a method called output stuff. And that's going to be inside of the super class. And what output stuff does when it's called is output. This is from the super class. So let's create an object of the character five class and see what happens when we call the method output stuff. So we create an object called C and then we call the method output stuff. And when it's called, it's going to output. This is from the super class, just as we would expect. Now, what would happen if we create an object of the subclass or the laser man five class? So we constructed an object of the laser man five class called laser. And now we're going to call the method output stuff. Well, what's the problem here? Laser man five does not have an output stuff method. So what is it going to do? If a method is not found in a subclass, Java will look for that method in the super or parent class, and it finds it inside of the character 5 class. And so if we were to run this code, it would say this is from the super class. Now this can get interesting because what we can do is actually create an output stuff method, not only in the super class, but also in the subclass. And so we have what looks like duplicate methods, output stuff and output stuff. The only difference is, is that the superclass method says this is from the superclass, and the subclass method is going to say this is from the subclass. So if we took the exact same code, laserman5 laser equals new laserman5, and then we said laser.output stuff, which one is it going to call? Is it going to call the one from the superclass or from the subclass? Well, the output would be this is from the subclass. So obviously it's calling the subclass method. So Java is going to look at the object that was created and it's going to call methods from that class. And only if it doesn't find one is it going to look up into the super or the parent class. And when we have a method that has a duplicate name, this actually has a name in Java. It's called overriding, meaning I had this method called output stuff in the super class. I wasn't necessarily happy with what it did or I just wanted to change what it did so therefore, I redefined it inside of the subclass LaserMan5. And when I do that, what it's called is overriding. And so it's the idea of providing different implementation for a method that is already defined and or implemented in its parent slash super classes. Now, overriding can be found throughout Java. And one of the best examples of overriding can be found with the toString method. And it's not a method that I made up like the output stuff method. So let's take a look at the toString method and see what it does. So if I was to create an object of the superclass called C, and then I said system.out.println.c.toString. Now, I want you to notice something here. Character 6 is not extending any other class that we know of, but we're going to try to call the method toString. Is it going to give us an error saying there isn't a method called toString, or is it going to output something? Well, if you've ever used toString before, you would know that it's going to output something. And in this case, it would output a memory reference saying, this is where it's located inside of memory. And so it would say character six, the name of the object, at, and then some kind of hash code like 1a, 2b, 3c. And so I want you to be amazed just for a sec because the character six class does not have a super class. Well, I'm here to tell you that it actually does. And that class is called the object class. We're going to look at Eclipse for just a second to show you that there's a bunch of methods that are actually coming in from the object class. So what I've done here is I've created a class called Inheritance 107, and then I created the simplest class that I could think of, class example, and it has nothing inside of it. There are no methods, but watch what happens in Eclipse when I try to use object E of the example class. I'm going to say E dot. And it's amazing that Eclipse, what it does is it shows you all the methods of the class. 
notice what it's saying right here equals get class hash code notify notify all hey two string that's what we were just talking about wait 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 where are all these coming from well something that you need to understand about java is that there is a class that every single class you create inherits from it's one class to rule them all it's called the object class and it is implicit to say class example extends object and so in our prior example where we say c dot two string what we were doing is we were calling the two string method from the character sixes superclass we just didn't see the extends it has a superclass and it's called object and you can use these with every single class that's created in java and what we are doing when we write the two string method so we could come down here and say public string two string what we're doing is we're actually overriding from the object class that every class implicitly inherits from in Java now that we see that there's a class that every class in Java inherits from and we understand that this implicit statement is there in Java meaning the extends object is going to be there even though we don't see it meaning that character 6 can use all the methods and features of the object class now we're starting to get an idea of where this two string method is and how it can work without being in any of the visible classes that we have created and without seeing any visible inheritance going on now what happens if we don't like what a superclass method is doing and we don't like what the object two string method is doing because it's printing memory references who wants to know where an object is stored in memory not many people what I want to do instead is override the two string method inside of the character six class and what are we going to output well we're going to output the name and the level of the character six object so if we were to run this program now and say system.out.println c.2 string it would no longer output a memory reference what it would output is the name which is zap which we gave through the constructor and the level which we also gave through the constructor which is nine now what happens if we want to take this one step further and use it with the subclass instead of the superclass? So first we would create an object of the subclass called laser, and now we're going to use the two string method. Well, what happens in Java when there is not a method to be found inside of its class? The laser man eight class does not have a two string method. Well, what it's going to do is the same thing that it did with the output stuff method. It's going to look for that two string method inside of LaserMan 8, not find it, go to the superclass, see if it's there. It will find it. It will not go up any further. It doesn't go up to the object class to go looking for it. Once it finds it, it goes ahead and uses that one. And so it says, name is zap, level is nine. So taking this even further, what happens if we want to override it one more time and we create the two string method inside of the subclass? What do we want to add to what a laser man eight looks like? Well, we want to include the things from character, its name and its level. And we also want to add how many charges does it have? Well, if we were to run this right now, unfortunately, we would not get name is app, level is nine and charges is 90. What we would get is just charges is 90 because it finds the two string method. It knows what it needs to output and therefore it doesn't go any further. It doesn't look in the superclass to see what its two string method is also doing. How could we fix this? Well, one, we could change the information in the subclass. And this is what a lot of beginning programmers do. They just say, well, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to print the name, the level and the charges. So therefore when I override it, I'm just going to put all the information inside of the subclass. Well, this would work and it would print out the correct information. This is actually a bad thing. This spits in the face of what inheritance is because inheritance is using the features of an existing class. We already have a feature in an existing class that says the name and says the level. Why in the world would we want to repeat that process again? What if there are 20 things that this is outputting? 
Would we want to copy everything from there? Well, no, we would want to use what's already existing. Well, how do we use something that's already existing like the toString method when we already have a toString method inside of our class? So again, don't do this. Make sure that you use inheritance. And how are we going to use inheritance? We're going to use the toString method. So we're going to change it slightly and say output equals toString and then concatenate on charges. But unfortunately, if we were to try this, it would give us an error. And the reason is the toString method would not call the superclass toString method. It would call this toString method. So what it would do is it would come in here, call this method, go right back to it, call this method again, and it would do this infinitely. This is called infinite recursion. And we don't want infinite recursion as it would crash our program. But we still want to say, don't use this toString method right here. Use this one up here. And we are so close to doing it. All we would have to do is add on the keyword super in front of toString, indicating, hey, I don't want to use the subclass toString. I want to use the superclass toString. And now, if we were to output, we would get the desired output, name zap, level 9, and charges are 90. And please take note of this, because so many beginning programmers decide to start using super in front of all of their methods, especially when they start inheritance. The keyword super is only if there is a method with the same signature, as in the case of the toString method. That's when you need to add super. If you want to use the super class method as opposed to using the subclass method. So to sum it up, we've looked at overriding. And what is overriding? It's providing a different implementation for a method that's already been defined. And we showed you that with the toString method and with the output stuff method. We also showed you if a method is not found in the subclass, Java will look for it in the parent class or the superclass. And sometimes that superclass is going to be the object class, as is in the case of the toString method. Although the code saying extends object is not there, we know that the toString is being overridden from the object class and that extends object is implicit and all classes have access to the object class. And so I just wanted to make that point again. All classes in Java can use the object class. And then finally, if you ever have a case where in the superclass you have a method with the exact same signature as a method in the subclass, if you want to use the superclass method, you must add the keyword super in front of it. And that will call the superclass method as opposed to calling the subclass method. Overriding is common inside of Java and can be an important tool as long as you understand how it works with inheritance. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.